Today we celebrate the Mass of the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you, my dear friends in Christ. As we come before the Lord today, we give him praise and thanks. The Lord reminds us today that we must not put ourselves first, but we must be the servant of all. With that in mind, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you call us all to serve your Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ, who served us by dying on the cross, Christ, have mercy. Lord, you invite us to serve one another in your name. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your holy law, upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words are true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our response to God's word. The Lord upholds my life. The Lord upholds my life. O God, by your name save me, and by your might defend my cause. O God, hear my prayer. Hearken to the words of my mouth. The Lord upholds my life. For the haughty have risen up against me, the ruthless seek my life. They set not God before their eyes. The Lord upholds my life. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord sustains my life. Freely will I offer you sacrifice. I will praise your name, O Lord, for its goodness. The Lord upholds my life. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, 
Where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but you do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your pleasures. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began to journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, Jesus began to ask them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent, for they had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down for the twelve and said to them, if anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed the child in their midst and putting his arms around the child, he said to them, whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The Gospel is full of surprises. Of course, we have the surprises that the Lord does through his wonderful miracles, the surprising acts of his love. You will remember just a few weeks ago at Sunday Mass, we heard the Lord curing a man who could neither hear nor speak. And you can imagine the surprise that must have been on that man's face when he was able to hear and speak, probably for the first time in his life. And you can imagine the surprise there must have been on the faces of the people who saw this miracle happen. The Gospel says they were exceedingly astonished and said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is certainly a beautiful surprise, God's kind of surprise. But today, dear friends, the gospel gives us a different kind of surprise, and it is not a good one. Jesus himself must have been surprised when, after he has told his apostles that he must suffer and die for the sins of the world. 
and then rise again on the third day. After he has told them all of that, he hears his apostles talking among themselves of all things about who was the greatest. What childishness on these grown men. The greatest among them was the Lord Jesus himself. And here are these apostles arguing among themselves who was the most important among them. Who was number one? The Lord Jesus could have turned away in disgust when he heard the apostles talking in this very surprising way. But he did not. The Lord was patient with them, and the Lord is patient with us. Patiently, he uses that occasion to teach the apostles the important lesson that the greatest person is the person who serves the others. The greatest person is the person who receives a child, whether that is a little child or shall we say, a much older child like us. The greatest is the one who serves, even as Jesus served, and served us to the point of dying to set us free. On Friday of this week, we celebrate the feast of a saint who certainly was an example of serving others. He lived 400 years ago in France, and his name is St. Vincent de Paul. He was ashamed that he came from a poor family. His family had to struggle to help him to become a priest. Then he was ordained a priest, and at first he thought that he would just now serve the rich and the famous. But God is a God of surprises. When the young Father Benson was on a sea voyage, his ship was attacked by pirates who sold him as a slave. And there in slavery, he saw what poverty really was and his heart was changed. This once proud young man who wanted to serve the rich and the famous now resolved to spend his life serving those who were poor. After two years, he was set free, and he returned to his native France to do his priestly work. And then God gave him, shall we say, the surprise of his life. One morning, as Father Benson was coming out of his rectory and came down the steps, he found a basket. He opened the basket and he found inside a baby wrapped in a blanket. And there was a note from the mother. Dear Father Benson, Please take care of my baby. I have nothing to give him. And that began the work that Father Benson would do for the rest of his life. He spent every day serving the poor, serving the suffering. He wrote this, we must keep our hearts open to the sufferings of other people, and we must pray that God may always grant us the spirit of compassion, which is truly the spirit of God. He attracted other people to join him in his work. He established the religious order, the Daughters of Charity, and he truly deserved the name that the Church has given him ever since the Apostle of Charity. Years later, a group of lay people in France would join together in serving the poor following 
St. Vincent's example. And they call themselves the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. And we are proud here in our parish to have a St. Vincent de Paul conference carrying on the works of this saint today. When he was young, Father Vincent thought, as the apostles did in the gospel today, he wanted to be the greatest, to have the most, to be recognized by others. But God surprised him, and he learned that the greatest person is the servant of all. Now, dear friends, all of us are called to learn that lesson. Remember, to serve the poor does not only mean helping those who are poor in food or clothing, although our St. Vincent de Paul Society, with your help, does that. There are so many people who are poor in another sense because they need your friendship. They need a reassuring phone call. Or they're a young person who needs someone simply to listen, or a friend or a neighbor or a co-worker who is having a difficult time in his or her life. The Lord calls us to serve them, to be the hands and the ears and the heart of Jesus to them. And if we do, then we are indeed the greatest in God's eyes, because we are doing exactly what he wants us to do. Let us never forget the words that please God we will hear when we go before his throne in heaven. Well done, good and faithful servant. Whatever you did for the least of my brothers and sisters, you did for me. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Rejoin in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, <clears throat> of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, in concept stands with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, or has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, standing in God's holy presence, we present our needs before him, saying after each of them, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Timothy, God and Lord, and all the leaders of the church, that they will help us to continue to grow in faith and holiness, we pray to the Lord. 
with following the words of the gospel today, we will remember that the greatest person in the eyes of our Lord is the person who serves others in his name. We pray to the Lord. That during this time of the Eucharistic renewal, we will grow in our love and appreciation of the Holy Eucharist, our Lord's greatest gift to us, his people, we pray to the Lord. For the blessing of peace, particularly at this time in Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine, and for peace in troubled homes and troubled hearts, we pray to the Lord. For our American servicemen and women serving throughout the world, particularly members of our parish, that they will be protected in safety, we pray to the Lord. For doctors, nurses, EMTs, and healthcare professionals, police officers, and firefighters, that the Lord will bless them in their service of us all, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, and for our beloved dead, we pray to the Lord. Let us offer our own prayer in silence. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people. Guide and protect us in our journey of life. And one day bring us safely home to your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, <clears throat> Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my iniquity, O Lord, and cleanse me from my sin. <clears throat> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray the offering of your people, that what we profess with devotion and faith may be ours through a worthy way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to be right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by his birth we are reborn. By his suffering, we are freed from sin. By his rising from the dead, we rise to everlasting life. And in his return to in glory, we enter into your heavenly kingdom. And so we join with all the angels and the saints to praise you. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes.
comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We pray the second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be Co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead 
us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessing of hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body of Christ keep us safe from eternal life. Amen. We invite you to welcome our Lord in spiritual holy communion to your heart. Before we come to the final prayer and blessing, we give thanks to God that we have joined in the holy sacrifice of the Mass today. And again, I remind you that you are remembered at all of our Masses here in our church. We look forward to welcoming you here so that we can join in praising God together. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those who renew with this holy sacrament, that we may come to possess the redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.